This is part two of a three part tutorial if you haven't seen part one and want to know about the basics of shutter speed and why is it needed for natural looking motion I suggest you go into the list here or in the description and head over to part one. So if you already saw part one or you have basic knowledge about motion blur you already know how it will affect the perception of movement in your film. We already know that we will need motion blur with standard frame rates to have smooth motion. That is, if we want smooth motion. There are two alternating ways of measuring shutter speeds. First, you can choose a shutter by the duration it is open relative to a second. This is common in photography and most DSLR and mirrorless cameras will be set to this shutter measure by default. A shutter of 1 48th of a second would therefore expose each frame of a 24 frames per second sequence with half the time a frame will actually show. Second, you can choose a shutter by the duration relative to a single frame. This is common in filming due to rotating shutters in classical film cameras. It is measured in angle. A 180 degree shutter will always expose each frame of a sequence with half the time a frame will actually show no matter what the used frame rate is. And here you can already see that an angle measure can be more convenient as it's measured on frames and not on time. So why do we use angles? There are very good resources for this on YouTube already, so I keep this very short. Some classic film cameras have a rotating disc in front of the film. The film is moved to the next frame while the shutter is closed and exposed while the shutter is open. If the shutter disc has a 180 degrees opening, we talk about a 180 degree shutter. And as you can see, this will expose the film 50% of any given time. A faster shutter could use a disc with a 90 degrees opening. We would talk about a 90 degree shutter and the result would be that the film is exposed 25% of the time. As you can see, shutters can logically not be longer than 360 degrees and not shorter than 0 degrees. So, which shutter speed is ideal for filming? There's not one right answer to that. You may think, as you are using a camera with an electronic shutter and there is no physical restrictions, like having to move the film while the shutter is closed, you would want to shoot with an always open or a 360 degree shutter. Usually that's not a good idea. While it's possible to shoot at 360 degrees, moving objects or camera shake will introduce a high amount of motion blur that can look unpleasing. Here's our metronome from part 1 again. It is rendered with a 360 degree shutter and you can see that the perceived image has a lot of motion blur. We are all very much used to the look that a film camera produces and they predominantly use a 380 shutter for smooth motion. So if you are in the film look, I suggest that you go for a 180 degree shutter and if you prefer the time measure, that means 1 84th of a second shot on a 24 frames per second timeline or 1 50th of a second on a 25 frames per second timeline or so on. Be aware that minor changes will not affect your image in a noticeable way. A 1 50th shutter is a good shutter speed for 24, 25 and 30 frames altogether. If you want to shoot slow motion, you shoot at higher than normal frame rates and display these frames at a normal speed. To get the right amount of motion blur, you can again just stick to the 180 degrees roll. Any change in frame rate will maintain the right amount of motion blur. If you use time-based shutter speed at 60 frames per second, you should set the shutter to 120th of a second or something close to that. 240 shutter for 120 frames per second and so on. With slow motion, we have one thing to be aware of. The 180 degree rule only applies if you don't plan to slow your footage artificially down in post. For example, you might use a camera that will give you a maximum of 180 frames per second, like the new GH5 does. Sometimes you might want an extreme slow motion and therefore you might want 360 frames per second. As your camera cannot deliver that, you have to slow the footage further down in post. As the resulting footage will be shot at 180 but treated at 360 slow motion, you can already see that a 180 degree shutter would look like a 360 degree shutter after processing. In a case like this, just use a faster shutter. In this example, it would be a 90 degree 
or one in a 720th of a second shutter. Using frame rates that are easy to double and multiply can help a lot to figure out the right shutter speed. Here's a little tip from my experience. If you ever have doubts about what the right shutter speed is, you should go for faster speed. In part 3, I will show you how you can add motion blur to a film. On the other hand, you cannot remove blur once it's in your footage. Therefore, footage with little motion blur is much more versatile on how you can use it in the end. Depending on your knowledge and workflow, it's always better to get the right motion blur in cam. So we all set to go? No. The devil is in the detail. Power line frequencies cause certain lights or monitors to pulse in certain frequencies. If your shutter is not in sync with your pulsing, you will see odd flickering in your footage. Here's an extreme example for flicker caused by fluorescent lights and displays because of choosing the wrong shutter speed. What you need to do here is to find a shutter that is in harmony with the pulsing. As most pulsing is either at 50 Hz or 60 Hz, check a 1 at 50th or 1 at 60th shutter to see how the image on your camera display is behaving. If that doesn't give you a good result, try other shutter speeds as well. For example, I'm shooting this tutorial in 25 frames per second, but I'm using a 60th of a second shutter speed. So I'm a bit off the 180 shutter rule. Why do I do this? Let me show you what happens when I change to 180. As you can see, the monitor in the back started to flicker. Even though I'm a country with a 50 Hz power grid, the TV runs at 60 Hz. Today, manufacturers usually don't care to build 50 Hz versions of their displays, as it's not technically necessary. It is easily fixed by adjusting the shutter accordingly. You can run into problems when you have 50 Hz fluorescent lights in the same frame as you can synchronize to both frequencies at the same time. Your best options are then to change the lights or the location. Fixing in post is possible, but you'd rather start with clean footage. If you shoot high frame rates for slow motion, you will almost always run into problems with fluorescent lights. More about that in part 4 of this tutorial, when we will talk about fixing shutter speed in post. Let's move on to the creative section. When do we not obey the 180 degree shutter speed rule? For creative reasons. Lots of films use alternating shutter speeds to stir an emotional reaction. One of the most commonly mentioned examples for creative shutter speed is Saving Private Ryan. Steven Spielberg achieves extreme tension with a variety of tools. Most shots are set up with a point of view to give the viewer the feeling of being there in person. The fast edit and the shaky handheld camera cause stress and disorientation. And he used shutter to further the tension. Most shots on the beach are filmed with a 90 degree shutter. Some explosions are filmed at an even higher shutter speed, a 45 degree shutter, which captures splinters and dirt for an even more threatening visual. Furthermore, he uses longer shutters and a third person view for shots like these. The result is an experience of shell shock, just to pull you right back into the reality of being under attack. Brilliant. Private Ryan also used out of face shutter, meaning that the film was transported to the next frame while still in exposure. This mimics the technical less than perfect cameras that were actually used in combat situations of World War II. I would like to do a little experiment with you. This is a 45 degree shutter scene from Private Ryan. The higher shutter makes the scene actually look like a sequence of still pictures. Next, I will use the same scene, but I will have After Effects render 180 degrees shutter in. Does it feel different to you? To me, the movements feel more connected and normal, even with the extreme shake of the camera. One of the easiest way to achieve a dreamlike poetry is to film a scene with a simple 180 degree shutter and then to slow that scene to half speed in post. Every frame is now displayed twice on the timeline. A simple slow motion. The original 180 degree shutter is then perceived as 360 degrees shutter, giving too much motion blur for natural movement. 
As simple as this technique is, most of your viewers will neither know how this is done nor think about it in an edit. It can make your film more interesting or let your audience pause for a moment. Here it was done in Apocalypto to give you a full break after a long chase. And it's not the reason that they couldn't make real slow motions. They do it all the time in this movie. You can also record shutter longer than a given frame would last. That will result in blur stretching over multiple frames that then are identical on the timeline. I recorded this with an extremely long shutter to get a spaced out effect. When you know that a sequence will be speeded up in post, just do a little calculation. If you plan to speed the footage by 400%, set the shutter four times longer to get the right amount of motion blur, or even longer for flowing effects. There are no real rules when to use what and it's part of the art that is filmmaking. I suggest not to overdo these effects and to only use them when they help to understand and feel the story you are telling. This is the end of part 2. Part 3 will give you advice on how to fix a shutter that has been messed up while shooting and why it makes sense to shoot high shutter speeds for special effects. I hope you found this useful. Please like this video, give me your ideas in the comments and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate every support from you guys. Thanks for watching.